I was first introduced to stroke after my very first year of university. As a family liaison of the intensive care unit and emergency room at a local hospital, I was able to meet people from all walks of life that shared one thing in common. A loved one was sick or injured. Now, as an 18-year-old with no medical experience whatsoever, I could not tell the difference between many diagnoses that occurred within the hospital. However, there was one that I could recognize just a little bit better. Strokes. The weakness to one side of the body, the slurred or jumbled speech, it seemed clear to me that this patient has had a stroke. A stroke occurs when the blood supply to the brain is interrupted or reduced, and this can lead to a variety of impairments and disabilities. Now currently, with the drastic increase in lifespan over the past 50 years, a lot of the research in this area focuses on strokes and elderly populations. In fact, I spent two years of my life investigating geriatric strokes here at McEwen and at the University of Waterloo. But what if I were to tell you that there's an age group that has a higher risk of stroke than older adults? What if I were to tell you that this group is babies? Babies having a stroke, that seems a little weird. Well, in fact, a full-term newborn baby has triple the weekly stroke risk of an adult that smokes and is a type 2 diabetic and has high blood pressure. 10,000 Canadian children are currently living with the consequences of having a stroke at birth. Clearly, this is a substantial issue. So, on the left, we can see an MRI scan of a typically healthy newborn brain. And on the right, we see a scan of a one-day-old baby who has had a stroke at birth. Now, if this stroke were to occur to any one of us in this room, it would be devastating. But since this baby is only one day old, it has the opportunity to develop around this injury and have a better life. These strokes can be classified as perinatal stroke. That is, a stroke that occurs prior to or soon after birth and can lead to a variety of, di of um, disabilities. These can be a weakness to one side of the body, an intellectual disability, behavioral disorders, as well as epilepsy. Now, since there is no preventative measure to prevent these from occurring, most research in this area focuses on how to improve outcomes following stroke. Currently, I'm a graduate student at the Alberta Children's Hospital, and my lab is dedicated to understanding perinatal stroke and how to optimize results following stroke. My supervisor has created a team that is dedicated and can use a very vast number of different cutting edge techniques and equipment to look at perinatal stroke. For example, we have an MRI scan that can take in-depth pictures of the child's brain while they go on a magical journey into space. The kids can become astronauts and receive training certificates by completing an MRI scan. So we can use this to answer a variety of questions. For example, we can track the diffusion of water to look at different pathways within the brain. And then we can correlate these pathways to how well they do clinically. Additionally, we can look at the functional activity in the brain and as well look at how this correlates with how well they do clinically. Now additionally, our lab is one of a few labs across the world that deals with pediatric non-invasive brain simulation. Now, if you haven't heard of brain simulation before, it might seem a little weird at first, but I assure you it is completely safe. There is a slight tingling feeling, but the kids really do not seem to mind. So our lab uses multiple different types of non-invasive brain simulation, such as this robotic TMS machine. But for the purposes of this talk, I'm only going to discuss one, which is called transcranial direct current stimulation, or TDCS for short. So as you can see, this device is a lot smaller and easier to use. When activated, the two electrodes on the scalp send a weak electrical current that goes through the skull and onto the surface of the brain. Now, the stimulation alone might not be enough to cause any change itself, but the idea here is that you would use this brain stimulation when doing a certain task, and it might help you learn this task better or faster. So brain stimulation is on the horizon and is gaining a lot of traction in a lot of different fields. Olympic athletes are using TDCS. Other researchers are using TDCS to look at things like depression or schizophrenia. Even surgeons are beginning to take a look at this. 
My first TDCS experience was actually here at the university uh, in Dr. Chris Streamer's lab, where we used TDCS as a potential therapeutic device to rehabilitate people from a certain type of stroke seen in older adults. So our lab back in Calgary has used TDCS and has actually shown that it improves motor function in healthy, in healthy kids. So what you can see is that what's highlighted in blue is the placebo version of TDCS where it feels like it's sending a current but it's not actually doing anything compared to in the green where there is, you can see the improvement by itself. An important thing to note is that this change was still evident six weeks after testing. The brain stimulation literally changed their brains. So let's go back to the child with a perinatal stroke. Since the stroke has occurred to the right side of their brain, they will have some weakness to the left side of their body. And this leads to the well-known idea that the right side of the brain, and all of us here, controls the left side of the body. But this is not always the case. When we were first born, the right side of our brain controlled not only the left hand of our body, but the right side of our body as well. The idea here is that throughout development, these same side pathways degrade and allow for these natural crossing pathways to form. But in perinatal stroke, kids sometimes have to rely on these same side pathways because it might be the only connection that they have from their brain to their weakened hand. Now you may think that these same side pathways are doing some good for these kids, but in fact, they're actually doing the opposite. Research has shown that kids with fewer same side pathways have a better clinical motor ability. So therefore, our lab tries to use TDCS to inhibit these same side pathways and in turn improve their motor function. To date, our lab has completed one clinical trial in perinatal stroke using TDCS. This trial showed that TDCS in perinatal stroke was safe and feasible. Additionally, we asked kids to come up with a specific goal that they had prior to the trial. This could be something like tying their shoes with both of their hands or fixing a pedal bike. After the trial, we asked them, you know, do you think you were successful of your goal? The kids that received brain stimulation reported a higher chance of success compared to the kids who received the placebo version. This gave our lab hope. And it also leads to our second clinical trial that is happening right now. In this clinical trial, we decided since the last clinical trial showed that TDCS was safe in children with perinatal stroke, we decided to increase the amount of stimulation just to see if we can improve outcomes even more. Now, this clinical trial is still going on right now, so I'm not able to discuss uh, how the findings are, but it appears so far that all the kids I've attended have shown a really positive benefit. So being at the Children's Hospital has really shown me the importance of research. Just the other day, I was able to observe a neurosurgery and got to see a live human brain inches away from my face. And then I got to see that same patient speak a few hours later. This would not be possible without research. For me and my research, I love being able to interact with perinatal stroke survivors and, survi and stroke survivors of all ages. They are all gladiators to me. They give me and my lab motivation to come up with innovative ways of using brain stimulation to develop their rehabilitation even more. There is one thing that I can tell you about the clinical trial right now, is that it is giving hope to perinatal stroke survivors. And if there's one thing that I've learned in my relatively short research career, is that hope inspires research, and research inspires hope. Thank you.